Welcome to Talk Wrestling here on NoDQ.com and of course the NoDQ channel on YouTube at AaronRefNoDQ. First of all, thank you so, so much to everybody who watched the t and commented, of course, on the 10th anniversary show for Talk Wrestling. Um... It's it, it's funny to be it's it, Ric Flair always said it's hard to be humble and it very much is because I got a tremendous outpouring from all of you about talk wrestling so thank you so much thank you to everybody at No DQ Aaron and Greg and Virtue and Interstate Kyle and even uh, Stone Cold Grandpa for the support over the last um, few months while I was gone of course now that I'm back. Um, it's it, it's a it's a fun time to be involved with NoDQ.com. It's a fun time to be a wrestling fan. I think you know people are kind of crapping on wrestling these days, and the fact that WWE is kind of making it is making it what it is. But um, if you, if you dig deep enough, you can find something you like in WWE or with GFW Impact or with Lucha Underground or with the Indies. There's something for everybody now, and I, people have said that all over Twitter, and I'm kind of re retweeting, if you will, re, re commenting on everything. But it really is true. I think wrestling is uh, is is better than people are giving it credit for right now. And I think people have to take a step back and realize that it's not all WWE bad that will be okay. Um, thank you also to everybody who has been tuning in to the panel. Uh, the official No DQ panel is now up. You can check it out here on the channel. And of course, on NoDQ.com. Um, had a lot of fun having Craig from Australia on the uh, on the show this week. It was very exciting to have a, a newcomer come in and give his opinions on the various topics in wrestling. Uh, of course, this week was the most overrated wrestling uh, personalities in history. So check that out on the channel. And of course, lest we forget the championship No DQ Trivia Challenge, the Wrestling Trivia Challenge, the No DQ Wrestling Trivia Challenge. 1-0, reigning, defending, undefeated, undisputed champion of the world. I am the champion. Bring on the challengers, Aaron. I don't care if it's anybody on the staff. I don't care if it's anybody from any foreign country. It does not matter. Bring them on. I double dog dare you. Today on the show, I know I said I would address your guys' questions that I didn't get to on last week's show. Unfortunately, I cannot do that due to a technical snafu on my part. Um, I had the questions all saved, everything was ready to go, and I wiped my computer. <laughs> Completely wiped the thing clean. No idea how to fix it. I've been talking to people on uh, on social media about how to fix it. I'm going to call my buddy Rob in to hopefully guide me through a step by step. But as I as I tried, it didn't happen. So we will see what happens with my computer. In the meantime, I'm going to briefly go over the results from Raw SmackDown 205 Live. I did watch 205 Live. I'm proud of myself. Thank you, Caitlin, and uh, NXT. And then uh, we'll wrap it up. All right, there we go. So Raw, the big story of Raw, of course, was the Kurt Angle storyline where he revealed that the big secret that would ruin his career, could ruin his life, ruin his family, was an illegitimate child. It wasn't Dixie Carter like we hoped. It wasn't Stephanie McMahon like we figured. It was Jason American Alpha Jordan who came out as Kurt Angle's biological son huh like even even chad gable himself i said yeah what i agree with chad 100 percent. i have been so high on both these guys uh, jordan and gable for months and months now ever since nxt and for them to not only break up this tag team which i will concede was getting stagnant and kind of boring and not really doing a whole lot with them on smackdown but of anything they could have done with the Kurt Angle storyline, the big secret that even Corey Graves knew himself, they go with this? Like, really? It boggles my mind that WWE really thinks that we're going to have our disbelief suspended by something like this. I don't understand. It, it bothers me. Um... They made a couple matches coming up for uh, next week's Raw. Of course, we saw Bailey defeat the Raw Women's Champion. My favorite person right now in WWE. Now, okay, thank you for reminding me. I just saw that. To those of you that have commented on YouTube that I kind of have been flip-flopping between Charlotte and Alexa, let me clear the record one more time. Charlotte is my favorite female personality on SmackDown. Probably in WWE right now. But Alexa Bliss 
is my favorite overall performer. Either sex, either brand. Alexa has continued to improve and improve and improve. Whether she's champion or right now she is champion, but whether she's champion or not, she has continued to improve and show me that she is exa knowing exactly what she wants to do, and that is be the goddess that she is. Charlotte, that's in my water there. Charlotte, on the other hand, has shown that, or has been showcased not as dominantly as she was when she was the Raw Women's Champion a few months ago, even, or last year, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, it's, uh, Charlotte hasn't been as dominant, so right now, she's my, she, she'll always have a special place in my heart, and of course, her dad will as well, but... For me, Alexa Bliss is the complete package right now. She's a she's a little spitfire. She's a she's a horrible person, <laughs> character wise, and she's dominant. She's the Raw Women's Champion now. Bailey defeated her on Raw Monday night, so not really so dominant on Raw TV, but she has been dominant as champion defending the title. Now with Bailey winning on Raw, she went to. Uh, Kurt Angle and demanded uh, was asking for a match at SummerSlam, as did Sasha Banks. So Kurt Angle made a match for this coming Monday between the best buds, Bailey and Sasha Banks, which we kind of saw the same thing on SmackDown between Charlotte and Becky and the uh, Spirit of Competition. But we'll get to that in a minute. Um, so we'll see that Monday night. We'll also see a handicap match between the Mister Raj and the Miz and Ambrose and Rollins, who have been kind of allies. The quasi allies as a result of the few, the various feuds with the Miz and the Miz Um, so we saw that. We saw a kind of interesting take with the uh, Titus Worldwide storyline. He threw him the towel or stopped the match, if you will, against uh, between Tozawa and uh, Arya Davari. And of course, uh, the following night on uh, Two Hundred Five Live, which we'll get to in a minute, we had a rematch between those two. Um, the Finn Balor Elias. Uh, Samson's storyline continues with a disqualification win for Balor with a nasty guitar shot. He cut Balor open right here on the side of his ear. It was ugly. Was not pretty at all. Uh, may have been this here. Um, so now they're going to have a no DQ match next week. No DQ match next week on Monday Night Raw. Um, and of course the Enzo and Cass story, if you want to call it that continues. Uh, what else did we have? The Revival. I was so impressed. Defeated the Hardy Boys. How about my boys in the Revival? Dash, Dash, uh, Dash, bleh, Dash and Dawson. I'm supposed to be my boys, right? Yeah. That shows you how much I paid then. Yeah, Dash and Dawson really showed me something Monday. They, they beat the Hardys straight up. It was awesome. And of course, the, the big thing now with uh, the Universal Championship, number one contender match between the Joes, Samoa Joe and Roman Reigns, and the no contest with the interference of the returning Eight days after an ambulance destruction, Braun Strowman. So we're probably, we're probably going to get that big fatal four way we've been talking about for weeks and weeks now between Brock and Joe and Roman and Braun. So we will see what happens on Monday Night Raw going into SummerSlam. SmackDown, of course, the final build toward this Sunday's Battleground pay-per-view. Jinder Mahal, the champion, as promised, brought the Punjabi, the Punjabi, we've been pronouncing it wrong, the Punjabi prison match, the Punjabi prison itself to SmackDown Live, and him and Randy Orton traded promos. Orton guaranteeing victory. I said this on the prediction show. You can watch it on ODQ.com's uh, official channel right now. I said that Orton would, in fact, regain the championship only to lose it via a Money in the Bank cash-in to Baron Corbin. You heard it here. I'm saying it again. I think it's going to happen. You tell me if I'm right Sunday night when we do the wrap up show. There you go. Um, Mike Kanellis finally made his in ring debut and defeated Sami Zayn. So we'll see a rematch with him at Battleground. By the way, we didn't have it on the Battleground show because they didn't announce it until after the Battleground. I am picking Kanellis to once again defeat Sami Zayn. There you go. Uh, what else? Jimmy Uso defeated Kofi Kingston, which leads me to believe that we're going to have a title switch on Sunday. But again, I've been wrong before. And Charlotte tapped out to Becky Lynch, which leads, lends credence, 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 to the fact that Charlotte will in fact be the number one contender going into SummerSlam after she wins the Fatal Five Way at Battleground. And the heels won on SmackDown between Kevin Owens, Baron Corbin against AJ and Shinsuke. So again, we're probably going to see AJ retain the championship, and Shinsuke will defeat Baron Corbin in the night to set up his cash-in later 
at Battleground. Immediately after SmackDown, of course, was 205 Live, and we will get to that right now. Let me bring up the results, if it'll scroll, which it won't. Yeah, I mentioned uh, Tozawa and Davari earlier when uh, Titus stopped the match. Dev uh, Tozawa demanded a rematch later that same night on Monday Night Raw, Monday Night Raw, Monday Night Raw and he got it. He faced Davari, and he beat Davari, and of course, uh, Davari, I believe, attacked after. I don't remember exactly how it happened. But um, again, I'm it's 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 Friday. I'm taping this, and it's it's Tuesday. So I've been, I have poor sleep. What can I say? <laughs> but yeah, Tozawa got his revenge in the rematch. Uh, Kendrick continued his feud with um, with Brian Kendrick by defeating a fellow uh, Englishman, a fellow countryman, in Devin Bennett. Um, alluded to the fact that he was the same from the same town as Jack Gallagher. So I like the fact that Kendrick's back, and we're seeing more of the Brian Kendrick. It's fantastic that he's back on the WWE TV on 205 Live, and he's getting a great story with him and Gallagher. Hopefully, we get a great match between the two at SummerSlam, if not a little bit sooner, maybe on 205 itself. And what a match between Mustafa Ali and Drew Gulak! My goodness. Um, best of three falls. What a match! Mustafa getting the big win over the technical. The uh, the technical wizard, if you will, not anything anyway from Joey Ryan. Um, I really enjoyed the entire show of Two Hundred Five Live, and I'm definitely going to be watching every week going forward. And how about NXT? Huh? I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. We had Ember Moon making her big return in ring over Ruby Riot. She will probably be in line to face Asuka at Takeover Brooklyn. If they haven't already announced that, which I think they have in the spoilers, I don't know for sure. Um, Oni, Lur Oni Larkin defeated Danny Birch. It's a tough, physical, brutal match. Um, no Way Jose defeated Cesar B Bonini. B Bonani? I don't know how to say that word. I don't remember his name. Uh, <laughs> uh, but we've seen kind of a feud between Jose and, of course, the Andrade Cien Amas. So uh, we'll see how that plays out going into TakeOver Brooklyn. I'll probably see those two one-on-one -on -one and take over. And the Lou... McIntyre defeated Killian Dane. Killian Dane no longer defeated. Drew McIntyre is still undefeated at NXT. And he will meet Bobby Roode at TakeOver Brooklyn 3. That is the results of uh, WWE TV for the last, for this past week. Next week, I'll talk about Impact a little bit because I'm finally watching Impact again. And I'll let you guys know what I think of the early seasons of Lucha Underground on Netflix as I watch them this weekend with my boy who's coming home today, hopefully. For now. Jeff Meacham saying, see you next time on Talk Wrestling.